Hi everybody, good evening and welcome to another session with me, Varun Rao, on Tech Tablet. In today's session, as we, we have discussed earlier, we would be looking at the next step of our data. Uh, that is, what are the different varieties of import that we have? And we would understand a, a table import technically. And we would also create an entity set using a table import. So th these are the three things that we would be uh, you know, doing today. When I say we would be creating an entity set, I also mean that we would be creating an entity type against this. Uh, now, if there's anybody out there who's looking for a detailed training on SAP UI5 or ODATA time specifically, you can always contact us. But in the meanwhile, it would be lovely if you could enjoy the free sessions which are posted out of passion in order to reach a few out there. Right. So taking this forward, let us first understand what are the different varieties of import that we have before we take this further, right? So there are four data uh, or data varieties of import that you know we have available. And they are import using data model from a flat file, or you can import using a DDIC structure. Now when I say a DDIC structure, let us say that you have created a table in a bath in SC11. That table can be imported here. You can import an RFC or a BOR. That also is an option that we have available. And then you have the search interface that can be borrowed. Now, there are some steps that we have to follow in order to you know, import a structure or in order to import a table. So in this specific video, we would be covering on how to import a table from DDIC. So, yeah, how to import a table from DDIC or you know. Yeah, which is the second variant of import in the, as per the slide. So how do we do that? In order to do that, the T code that we would be using would be SEGW, the one that we've seen in the previous video as well. Then we would be creating a new project. And when we create a new project, we know that four folders are formed. We have uh, seen what a project structure is also. Uh, and when these four folders are formed, you would click on select uh, import using DDIC structure. You can just go ahead, right click on your data model. And when you do that, you would be having these four options popping up. The data model from file, DDIC, RFC, BOR, and search interface. We would be selecting the DDIC structure. And once you have clicked on it, you would have to import the DDIC you know, parameters that are required for you to you know, take care of. So now let us quickly get into understanding how we would do this. So going back, this is my SCGW. But before we go into that, let me just do this. SC11, uh, let me delete these. Uh, and let us check for uh, you know, a, a, a table if you know, there is some table existing with ZENP. -E so we have three fields, MA and DD, employee number, and employee name, with a length of 10 and 50 respectively, all being character set. Okay, so we would, uh, now that we have this table and we are able to look at the three fields that we have created in this table, let me just open a new screen. And here, now I would go into SEGW, which is the service gateway uh, screen available for us. Now, let me just create a new project. So this is the button that used to create a new project. So going here. I would now, you know, create a project that would be Z E M P. You know, one two. We can just name it whatever we want. So I, because we have an employee track record available, I would, you know, create a name with as such, and this would be named as uh, employee lookup file. Okay. I would save it in a local object. And as we know, we have four folders created data model, service implementation, runtime artifacts, and service maintenance. Correct. Uh, but then when you go ahead and look into any of them, you would find that these folders as of now consist of nothing. And your service maintenance also has nothing for you. Now I would go into my data model right click here and we have a lot of options. You can create a new entity type, a new entity set, an association, a complex type, an association set, or you could also use a function import. But then we would go to import uh, a new 
we would be importing from the table that we have just seen in S11. And as we have seen in the slide, we have four options available with us. And the option that we would have to select would be DDIC structure, right? So the name here of my entity type would be <coughs> employee. Uh, let me do it with a capital E. You know, casing should not matter, but yeah, just in case if you're specific about it. Now, ZEMP is the table that I've created or that you know, we've seen in the data dictionary. And here I have, uh, you know, three fields available. Uh, notwithstanding the client, if you want, you could also import that. I would be importing all the three and go to next. Now you would be seeing that I have an ABAP name and, you know, this is the name that, you know, I can uh, change if I want. You know, it has employee number. I'll change this to employee number and this would be employee name i want it to be this way and we'll keep employee number as a key field because every employee is provided with an id or a number and this number is unique or it's it's very specific to one single employee we, there's no intermingling in this so now i would go ahead and click on finish it says the data model consistency is not fine. Okay, so what we'll do is, let me just go ahead and delete this. I'm not sure if there are some, you know, errors when the table was created. So let us go ahead and, you know, import using another table, something that we have or probably something that we know. Right, so let, I'll now have to navigate back to the SC11 screen. Okay, let's check this out. We've created this table in one of our previous sessions for ID and name. Okay, great. So we'll try importing this table into our structure or into the project that we've created, that is employee lookup trial. Again, let's go to data model, right click, import, DDIC structure. Um, it is Z EMP details two. So let me just enter this Z EMP details two. The name, uh, we can just name it as employee. I'm going to next, importing both the fields, I'm going to next. Okay, so these are the two ABAP names that I've uh, find and ID would be the key field because as I said, ID would be pretty case specific, uh, uh, employee specific. So now I'll click on finish. Right, so here uh, there are no errors. Uh, everything seems pretty much fine. Now let's go to entity types and see if we have an entity type that's created against the same. So employee properties, ZID 15 and Z name. Now there's one thing that I want you to observe whenever you create a new project or whenever you are done with importing that the data types would be changing to EDM types here. Uh, this is what I want you to notice. The EDM string, it was char earlier CHAR, the character set, but now we have the EDM string. And you know, when you go, when you import anything from ABAP to your OData, these are the list of EDM variants that you have available. This would be useful for you in your interview, like a byte, a boolean, date, time. So in SAP uh, ABAP, we have DATS, that's, uh, or you know, whatever you call it. But then here you have date time, you have date time offset, and you have time which are uh, relevant to the date time structure, okay? So there are some changes that would that you would find between the above data types and the ODATA EDM types. So yeah, just make a note of it. So we are done importing a project and we would also see that you have an employee set that's created against the same 
record uh, which we were as we were talking right so this is how you create a project in a cgw and this is how you can import using a table right so just to give you a quick walkthrough again the t code used is a cgw you then create a new project uh, you right click on the data model folder you ensure that the table created in your c11 should have no errors failing to which we've seen uh, an error that was throwing up uh, and then we once you're done with it you go ahead and mark a key field now please remember that you always have to mark the key field failing to which you might have runtime errors and once you're done with that you would just go ahead and check in your properties as we were just seeing let me just show it to you again this is the uh, project that we have created and here you would be having your entity type the name of your entity type and you know you would have your fields inside properties and the name of the entity set would be the same as that of entity type with the uh, you know suffix as set that is it the rest all would remain pretty common so i hope you have understood how to you know import a data uh, how to import data using the DIC structure. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do comment if there's any queries that you have, you have the comment box right below. And if you like this video, please use the like button because if it, it would be great if you would let us know if you like if you liked it or not, as it would encourage us to make further. You can always follow us uh, and click on the subscribe button with the bell icon in order to have regular updates on what is it that we're doing. And yeah, it, it, it will always be encouraged to share this as I, you know, there will be pretty, there will be a lot of people who might be looking for information on something. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day out there. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something. Do stay subscribed to this channel, Tech Tablet, for many more videos yet to come and a lot of, uh, you know, as there's a lot of knowledge yet to be exchanged between us. And there's any query and or if or or in, or in case if you're looking for any. In, you know, in depth training on this module, you can always write to us or you can visit us on the website that's provided in the, in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day out there.